Hi guys, it's Kobe here and welcome to Pixel Affair. In today's video, we are going to talk about the step and the time effector. So let's get into Cinema 4D and see how it works. So the first effector we are going to talk about is the step effector. So I have a matrix created here and the mode is set to grid with a count of 10 on the X, right? So with the matrix selected, I can come into my more graph menu, effectors, and I'll choose step. And you can see something is happening. What's happening is that gradually the size of my matrices or my matrix are changing in, in skill. So the first one stays the same and the last one scales up much bigger. And that's because with the in the step effector, let's go to parameter and you can see the scale is set to one, right? So the last um, matrix will be one and the first matrix will be zero and the rest will be interpolated between zero and one. So let's actually, first of all, let me take off the scale. Let's use position for it to be very obvious. So I'll increase the Y position to like say 200 so that it will be very obvious, right? And you can see now the last clone or the last matrix is the one which is at 200 um, centimeters. The first uh, matrix is still at zero point. And this interpolation is based on a curve in the step effector. So if I come to the effector tab, you can see we have a curve here. And now the curve is set to linear. But you see, watch if I should in take the one of the points, select one of the points here and move it up. You can see now it's moving the first point or the first matrix. And so it's basically based on this spline. So if I should take the spline and change the shape of the spline, you can see now our clones too is taking the shape of the spline. So that's what our interpolation is based on. And it doesn't affect only position, scale, and rotation only. So I'll come into this particular scene and have a cube which I've already animated and cloned. So if I should hit play, you can see all of the 10 cubes are moving up and down at the same time, right? With the clone selected, and I come to my more graph effectors, and I choose step, you can see it's doing the same thing, it's scaling them because in the parameters the scale is set to one we don't want that so we want to check the skill and you come down here with 12 open the other and you can see down here we have time offsets so if i should increase my time offsets now like say 20 and hit play you can see the way it's now playing offsetting the time and playing each at each other at different times right so it's now playing it step by step so that's basically what it does. So now if I come back to my effector tab, I can change the, um, like this, the spline. So let's say I move this one up and move this here and see it's giving us, let me actually increase our time radius. And you can see now it's giving us a different time, um, different movements of our matrices. So that's basically what the step effector does. From there, you can go ahead and use it as a deformer on regular objects. And again, make it use fields on it. I can bring in my field and you can see it's within here. It's affecting the two almost at the same time. If I should use something else, you will see. Let me use something like a cube a box field in here. You can see within here it's only affecting the two or like the one close it's affecting them but the side ones are all moving at the same rate so basically that's all about it you can use it as a deformer just make the step effector a child of any regular object and change it to one either point or polygon mode or object mode and you move it as a deformer so that's all about the step effector let's go into the time effector so the time effector works in a way that it basically changes your set value over time. And this one will be better explained with an example. So I have a cube which I have cloned here 10 times. If I come to my, with the cube uh, clone selected, if I come to more graph effectors and I choose the time effector. If I, now if I hit play, you can see all the cubes are rotating on its heading, right? And now with the time effector in the parameters, you can see rotation is set to 90. So what is happening is that it's rotating our cube 90 degrees per second. 
that's what is happening so every second you rotate 90 degrees so two seconds will be 180 and on and on and on so that's basically the function of the time effector so let's actually let me change it from rotation to something like position and you can see if i should increase it to say 22 and hit play you can see what time it's moving our cubes up at the same time 22 frames uh 22 centimeters per second so this is basically what it does but you can play along with it for example i have a sphere here which i've actually applied a poly effects to it so it's breaking its polygons then with the poly effects selected i can come into my more graph effectors and i'll choose my time effector if i should hit play you can see it's rotating every individual polygon of the sphere right so let me say i want to sort of let it disintegrate it move it upwards i can come into the time effector parameters and i'll say um position right and i want to move it on the y so i want it to go up maybe like this 40 centimeters per second and you can see it's moving it based on the object axis right so it's not moving it upwards so to do that let's set it um on the axis based on the space of the effector so I'll use the effector based on the effector space. So now if I should hit play, you can see it's moving upwards. So now it's very boring, typically. This is not interesting. But if I should simply add like something like the fall off, play along around with it. I like, let's say, a random fall off. And now hit play. You can see now it sort of breaks it up. And I begin to look like interested, like uh, broken down. Um, particles so you can use uh, it along with for um fields to get interesting looks with no without any keyframe or anything and you can see you have something interesting and with the same setup just the time effector and the random field the only thing i've added again to this particular one is just the linear field to just separate it so if i select the time effector and come to the field you can see i have linear and now i've overlaid the random field that's basically the only thing i've done and now you can see you have some interesting looking text disintegrating with no keyframe nothing using the time effector so it's playing it over time so that's basically what the time effector does